videos, we are going to get into lesson 16, um, where we're just going to be working on our multi-step uh, problem solving. We are going to connect our um, unpacking of read um, in these problems, and then we're also going to continue looking at how we can unpack the drawing portion of our RDW strategies. Um, so it's going to be great, and uh, let's take a look at some new problems here. Uh, here with me today. Do you want to say hi, special guest? Hi. <laughs> um, they just wanted to say hi. They are former students of mine, and they love uh, tape diagrams. So they just wanted to. <laughs> they just wanted to <laughs> hang out and uh, reminisce about the good old days. You guys, didn't we have so much fun uh, in Eureka Math last year? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Stinkers. <laughs> I was like, um, once in sixth grade, if you don't like your math, we're, we're done with it. Like, we don't do Eureka your, your anymore, so. Um, but didn't it give you a really good foundation of uh, number sense I will and that. problem yes, solving it, systems? It, it, it did. Helped. Yeah, it helped. So tell me this. Are you better mathematicians because of Eureka math? I don't know. They don't want to I'm admit it. I'm not sure. No. The answer like, is yes. It's yes. Probably, it's probably yes, but I don't want to admit it. Like, <laughs> Okay, hooligans, I'm going to do this next video. Thanks for coming to visit me. Bye. Girls. I'll Bye. show you my picture later. Okay. Look at that. Um, you want to see it. Like, you, you. Yeah, come come visit again. Bye. Bye, girls. Okay, so those girls are on their way. They are former students of mine, and they um, remember the beginning of the school year. And we were talking about how helpful tape diagrams are, even though they're being little stinkers. Okay, so here's the deal. We are going to use our uh, RDW strategies for word problems. Read, draw, write. Let's go ahead and read this. Mr. Fry distributed $126 uh, equally among his four children's children for their weekly allowance. How much did each child receive? Okay, so we are reading here. So I'm going to go ahead and within the reading, I'm going to visualize. So I'm just going to kind of tell you what I'm seeing. I'm seeing this really kind of nice looking guy named Mr. Fry. He doesn't have much hair yet because he has, or hair left because he has four kids. Uh, I think he's going to have a mustache. Um, <laughs> oh my gosh. I know I'm not the best artist, but here's mustache. He's got big ears. He kind of looks like a monkey and that was not my intention. Mr. Fry, he kind of looks like a baby, but maybe we'll make his hair a little bit spikier like this okay so mr fry has four kids um he has we'll say he has oops safe he has crew he has violet and he has emma so he has four kids and each week wow he is paying out a lot of money to these lucky kids. Each week he's paying out $126 for their in, for their insurance. No, for their allowance. So we want to know how much money does Safe receive? How much money does Crew receive? How much money does Violet receive? And how much uh, money does Emma receive? So um, if I were to practice our kind of expanding on our read. So this is the visualization. I um, in my visualization, I also retold what was going on there. Um, next, I'm going to repeat. And usually, you guys keep in mind, this is a conversation that you're having with someone else. I'm kind of just doing this with myself because my sixth grade friends have already left. Uh, so I would say, oh, Mrs. Calamaris, I heard you say that Mr. Fry, we'll call him Mr. F., has four kids, and he's going to pay $126 um, out for their allowance. Um, so that's the repeat step. And then finally, let's look at extending. And I'm going to say, yes, and each of them is going to receive an equal amount of money. 
Okay, so we've told we've retold the story, we've visualized it. Now let's go ahead and solve the problem. So we have, I'm going to um, fill out this tape diagram as another means to visualize what's going on here. So we have $126. 126 is represented by this entire rectangle. $126 is going to be shared evenly among four kids. So imagine that these are even slices. We want to know what is one um, portion of this rec rectangle, uh, what is the amount that is represented by one portion of this rectangle. Keep in mind, um, each of these portions is equal, even though it doesn't really look like that. So whenever we are looking at <clears throat> equal parts, you guys should quickly think about division. Um, in order to figure out what is going to be living inside of each of these four groups, we can do long division. We're going to share 126 right here evenly across four groups. So let's look at our long division. First, let's ask ourselves how many fours go into 12. Well, I know that three fours go into 12 and make sure we keep everything lined up. From here, we look at three times four, which is 12. Our difference when we take 12 from 12 is zero. Zero is smaller than four, so we can do check and move on. Let's go ahead next and bring down our six. And now we're going to ask ourselves how many fours go into six? Well, one four goes into six with some left over. From here, we look at one times four, which is four. We have six minus four, which is two. Two is smaller than four, so we're on the right track but we have a remainder. So what we need to do is drop a zero. We're going to add our decimal points. Make sure we bring that directly up. And you guys can see that I've labeled that we have zero tenths. I've done that so I can bring a zero down in hopes to extinguish or get rid of our remainder. Now let's look at how many fours go into 20. We are in luck because five fours go into 20. Thus five times four is 20. And when we take 20 from 20, we have nothing left. So each of these lucky kids is going to be receiving $31.50. When we divide, um, oops, when we divide 126 evenly across four groups, we will find uh, $31.50 in each group. Very cool. We're going to take a look at another. Next, we're going to look at a problem here that is going to be a little bit more involved. Um, let's go ahead using our RDW strategy. Uh, what we're really going to focus on here, um, you guys, is drawing. We're going to kind of unpack the drawing step. Um, really make sense of what's going on in this problem. Uh, let's go ahead and rewrite this problem. This is actually about our very own Tyler. Tyler mixed 6.83 pounds. LB is the abbreviation for pounds. Does it make any sense? No. Uh, pounds of cashews with 3.57 LB, which is equal to the abbreviation for pounds of pistachios. After filling up six bags that were the same size with the mixture, he had 0.35 pounds of nuts left. What was the weight of each bag? Okay, so this is an interesting problem. Let's go ahead and try to make some sense of this. So we have, we have, oops, I'm accidentally pushed the button. We have cashews and then we also have pistachios. I'm just going to abbreviate that. We have 6.83 pounds of cashews and we have 3.57 pounds of pistachios. Beyond that, we have some leftover. We're going to have 0.35 pounds leftover. So I want you guys just to imagine what's going on. So Tyler is mixing together some pistachios 
and some uh, cashews. He has more cashews than pistachios. He's going to pour them all into like, maybe he's making, you know, like a big container of like mixed nuts. This is like the Ziploc, or this is like the storage container. So he's going to pull them all, pour them all in here. Mix all the nuts up together. Do, 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 mix, up, mix up the pistachios. Mix up the cashews. And then once he mixes up the um, nuts, he's going to pour them into one, two, three, four, five, six bags. Um, these six bags are all going to be the same size. They're going to have the same amount of uh, pistachio cashew mix. This is kind of reminding me of Kira's apple cider problem because he's going to have some nuts left. Do you guys see, see how I'm kind of drawing in some nuts? He's going to have, after he shares all of his mixed nuts, he's going to have 0.35 pounds left. So what I would like for you guys to consider is, first of all, how... What will we have when we combine our cashews with our pistachios? So we're going to do CP. We have 6.83 pounds of cashews, and then we have 3.57 pounds of pistachios. We're going to add those up. Remember when we're adding together um, decimal decimals, I need everything to be lined up. So we're going to add our ten, our hundredths with our hundredths, tenths with our tenths, ones with our ones. So uh, 7 plus 3 is 10. We're going to carry our 1 over. 8 plus 5 is 13 plus 1 is 14. Again, we're going to carry our 1 over. 6 plus 3 is 9 plus 1 is, sorry, I have a funny hold in my pen, 10. And then make sure you bring this decimal point directly over. So cashews plus pistachios is 10.4. You guys know that he has some leftover. He's not going to distribute all of this mix into the six bags. He's going to distribute all of this mix minus... 0.35. He's not distributing all the mix. He's going to have some of the mix left over. Maybe he's going to save this mix for himself. Who knows? We'll have to ask him tomorrow. So I need you guys to uh, decide with me how much mix is he pouring into the bags. He has some left, right? This dark, this dark part of my drawing refers to the fact that he has 0.35 pounds left. So let's figure out what is he going to be pouring into the bags? We're going to do that by subtracting 0.35 from 10.5. Oops, I changed the number. It should not be 10.5, Mrs. Calamaris. It should be 10.4. I'm happy that I caught that because that would have drove me nuts. Bravo to those of you that uh, caught that. Um, so we have 10.4. Again, 10.4 is coming from what happens when we add our pistachios and our cashews together. So now let's do our subtracting. Can we take five from nothing? No, we cannot. But we, what we can do is go ask our neighbor to unbundle 10 for us. When our neighbor unbundles 10 for us, our neighbor is no longer four, it is a three. And now we are a happy 10. We can take five from 10. When we take five from 10, we are left with five. Can we take from three from three? Yes, we're left with nothing. Go ahead and bring that decimal straight down. Um, and then we have zero minus nothing is zero. One minus nothing is one. So 10.05 is what has been poured into our one, two, three, four, five, six bags. In the problem, it states that the bags were the same size. So when we are sharing something evenly across any amount of um, groups, we should be thinking of division. So that's exactly how we're going to figure out what went into any of these bags. Because they all had the same amounts, we are going to use long division. 
So let's look at 10.05. Again, this was the amount that was poured evenly across our six bags divided by six equal groups. Okay, so we're going to look at uh, 10.05 divided by six. How many sixes go into 10? One, with some left over, one times six is six. When we look at 10 minus six, we are left with a four. Is four smaller than six? Yes. Next, we're going to bring down our zero, and we're going to ask ourselves, how many sixes go into four? The answer to that is six with some left over. I'm going to bring up my decimal directly up. Now let's look at six times six, which is 36, and of course I'm running out of room. Sugar cookies. Uh, 40 minus 36 is four. I'm going to bring down my five, and I'm going to look at, hmm, I have 45 divided into six equal groups. What will I have in each group? Seven with some left over because seven times six is, I'm gonna move over here, you guys. I'm so sorry that I did not plan this very well. So what we're looking at is 45 minus 42. That is three. We have um, a remainder and we want to get rid of the remainder. So what we're going to do is bring down a zero. I ran out of room, so we were actually over here. So our three is becoming a 30. So we're looking at how many sixes go into 30. The answer to that is five, and this is very good news because five times six is 30. And when we take 30 from 30, we have nothing left. So what was the weight of each bag? Within each bag, there was 1.675 pounds of mixed nuts. Secret word, you guys, is uh, to come in tomorrow and tell us who were our special guests at the beginning of the video. Please make sure that one of these uh, problems is complete in your math notebook. And please make sure that you come in tomorrow uh, feeling excited uh, and ready to practice the, this amazing um, multi-step word problem. We, I, I, I was really excited to see what you guys did today in class, and I am really looking forward to that great problem solving. Uh, okay. <laughs>